This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Welcome to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commando.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Gang's all here. Kim, Ali, Ben, I'm Mike. Today, the scam of the week. Well, what you need to know about a new phishing scam that involves X-rated email, of course. And we'd love it if you tap the subscribe button. Before we get started this way, you get these podcasts delivered to your device every single week automatically. It works uh, perfectly. And we get started with the news. And as always... It's Kim Commando. Well, the big news is out this week about the drug dealers and the app that tricked them. But it wasn't really an anonymous chat app that works on a standard smartphone like all the news outlets are saying it is. I did some research. I went down to that Ali Seligman rabbit hole. Welcome. I, I did. I Happy like, to have you. It's <laughs> like, oh, no, I'm down <laughs> for somebody to get me out of this. Well, I'm going to get to all that in a sec. So here's the deal. You may have heard FBI agents here in the U.S., similar crime-fighting organizations around the world, they were so smart. They duped all these suspected criminals by tapping into their super-secret conversations. And how they did it was interesting. Now, there are things called hardened encrypted devices. Have you ever heard of this? No. Not that term, no. No. Nope. Hard, nope. Hardened encrypted devices. Now, I didn't know about it either, but I went down that rabbit hole. So... You can't buy one on Amazon or your local phone carrier store. You have to know someone who knows someone with these connections to get you one. They cost around $1,500, and you're going to pay for it using Bitcoin because you don't want to be traced, obviously. And at first glance, when you see a picture of it, it looks like a cheapo cell phone. But here's the deal. You can't use it to make phone calls. You can't get on TikTok. You can't get on Facebook, Twitter, or any place on the Internet. Okay. The only thing that this hardened encrypted device does is let you use an app. And this app was developed by U.S. and Australian agents, and they called it ANOM, but it's A-N-0-M. But if you're a drug dealer, a trafficker, a criminal, and somebody's selling you a hardened encrypted device with a super secret app called ANOM, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're like, hey, this is actually pretty darn good. So the drug traffickers and the criminals, they start selling each other these anom hardened encrypted devices. And they think that all of their conversations are totally secure. So they sell about 12,000 of them. And then 300, they say, criminal organizations are using these devices. But every single message that they're sending and receiving is being read by law enforcement, sometimes as the conversations are taking place. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think the message is about, right? (laughs) Moving and selling drugs. So if you think about all the details that they have to tell each other, the ships, the containers, the captains, the locations, the amount, the street value, the cost, how to pay, who to pay. And some of these messages were actually on a blog, but they've been taken down. Drugs were being transported in hollowed out pineapples. Hmm. That's new. Yeah. Uh, sometimes in cans of tuna fish. And so the cargo <laughs> looks like people at customs like, oh, pineapples, come on through. Come on through. Come on in. 800 people arrested so far. Wow. More to come. So the big question is, why did they tell everybody about this, right? I mean, yeah. if you're getting all this intel, why would you go public with it? Is, was this from the FBI? The FBI and Australian agents. I'll tell you about more of that okay. in a second. Well, they released it because it was going to come out anyway with all the indictments. But how they came up with the idea, that's what, Michael, this is interesting, because you just asked, was it the FBI? Well, apparently, the story is that U.S. agents, they were down in Australia, and they went out drinking with the Australian Agents, of course, because have you ever been to Australia? As you do. Okay, okay. because everybody in Australia drinks all day long. I swear to God, I don't know how anything happens in that country. I've been there. And it's just like pint after pint after pint. So they're drinking. They get drunk and they're like, hey, we, we, we should do this. We should do this. Then they find the right company to develop the app. 
And then they put it on these hard encrypted devices. They start getting it out into the marketplace. So they put it all, the whole thing together instead exactly. of a criminal organization. Exactly. Wow. I have an idea for our next brainstorming meeting. What's that? Maybe we need some pints to come up with <laughs> yes. something that good. Does it have we to do. be Heineken, though, or Australian? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, you know, here's the deal. Like, I, I swear this happens in Australia. Like, you know, like a heart surgeon, he'll go out drinking, has a few pints. You know, he belches, and then he says, like, okay, who's next? I mean, <laughs> this is Australia. Awesome. Okay, so, Ben, what do you got? Well, Tuesday morning, you might have noticed you couldn't log into a bunch of websites. Reddit eBay, New York Times, Amazon, they were all down. It was happening worldwide. Now, I don't know about you, but all the recent cyber attacks and the ransomware, my first thought was, uh-oh. That's true, yeah. Yeah. So that went on. Well, remember that guy in Texas. That's why I thought of it. The guy in Texas who was arrested for wanting to blow up the internet, who got arrested. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So that was my first thought. But And somebody didn't. Somebody had to tell me, you know, that's not really how it works, exactly. but that's okay. Exactly. Well, the outage lasted for about an hour before everything was restored. Okay, that's a long time in internet time. Oh, yeah, especially people who are just really tied to it. And when's it coming back? Well, details started coming out later that day and in, in the week. But the source of the outage was a CDN. And if you don't know what that is, that stands for Content Delivery Network. So, yeah, so you have all these sites. A new acronym. There you go. <laughs> Countless sites make up the internet, but they're only... A relatively small number of companies that provide the infrastructure for all those sites. Well, the whole idea behind a CDN is so that you don't have to have all these servers, right? right? And so you can sign up with a company that will help you distribute your content. So like, for example, we use a CDN from time to time to get out the podcasts or to get out the shows and stuff like that. So, so it's pretty common. Yes. And there's a ton of them out there. Right. And it's just not a lot of people know how it all, how sure. it all works. Well, this one involved a company called Fastly. That wasn't very fast. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they blamed this outage on, on what they called an undiscovered bug in a software rollout from last month. So when one of Fastly's customers... And hey, not, just one customer? Yeah. Is that what you one, just said? One customer. Okay. They're not saying which one. They made some <laughs> kind of software configuration change. I know who it is. You do? I think it's Hunter Biden trying to hide his emails. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call the folder Ukraine. No one will look here. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, made a software configuration change, and boom, down goes half the internet. Wow. Yeah. And at least a pretty big part of it. Now, again, everything was back up and running in like 49 minutes, and Fastly is trying to figure out how a bug crippled you know, all these sites. But it just goes to show how susceptible these things are. And that you know, one website's IT guy can you know, basically single handedly bring down the World Wide Web. You know how how vulnerable is that? Yeah. Think about that. Just one little software glitch. You get error four oh three, and it goes down. Did you hear what happened over at the Verge? Did you read that? Huh. Is that uh, apparently when this went down, the Verge also went down, and they said, okay, well, you know, because we can't work on our back end, we'll just have a Google Doc. And so they started working in the Google Doc, and then they posted the link to the Google Doc to say, here, if you want to know how we're doing on the outage, just click this link to read the Google Doc. And then they made it so anybody could edit it, though. So people are in there. You only heard. Come on. (laughs) Not a good idea. No. Well, at least it it wasn't a hack. At least it was, you know, just a defect or something in the system. Right? True, but it's kind of scary that that's all it takes. Right. If you do get a hack, it's going to be much, much worse. All right. So, Allie, be careful what's on your phone or computer when you take it in for repair. Speaking of Hunter Biden. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Back in 2016, this college student in Oregon, she sent her iPhone to an Apple repair contractor. Remember this name, Pegatron Technology Service. They had her phone, two texts snooping through it, and they found some explicit photos and videos. Mm. Wouldn't you know it? It would have been bad enough, right, if they sent these to themselves. Instead, they went on her Facebook page and posted them. No. Oh, yes. Pretending that it was her posting them. How horrifying goes out to all her friends and family, sees her at her most vulnerable. Pretty awful. So she sues Apple. She sued for $5 million, which, you know, yeah, good for you. She got a bunch of money. The exact amount was never disclosed. It was called a multi-million dollar deal. And that's probably part of the settlement was that she couldn't say how much. Exactly. 
The techs were fired. Apple says they performed an exhaustive investigation of this facility. Why This happened back in 2016. Why is this in the news now? Well, Pegatron reimbursed Apple for the settlement, and then they sued their own insurance provider <laughs> trying to get coverage because the insurance provider didn't want to pay for it. Uh, Apple had its name removed from the initial filings way back when, but all this revealed in some new kind of, you know, pretty unrelated case. So it makes you think, if you have to take your phone or your computer in for service, what could someone find on it? Well, you might have photos right. that you don't want someone seeing, right? On iPhone, they make it a little tricky because you can't password protect a folder just kind of in, you know, you'd have to get a third-party app or something. There is a nice workaround, though. So don't go with something called guided access. Okay, wait a minute. So are we, like, giving people, like, advice on how to store their naked pics on their phone the right way? I'm just wondering. Is <laughs> I this where we are. Okay. Or any sensitive documents. You know, what if you've got a picture of your driver's license or your passport? Or... Sure. Yeah, we'll Absolutely. We'll yes. You know, picture of a pair of passport. shoes. Passport. You can't see me. I'm doing finger quotes. <laughs> So on iPhone, you can actually use the Notes app for this. That Notes app is so handy, isn't it? I use it all the time. Not for that, but I use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a note. You can attach as many images as you want to it, and then you can password protect that note. So you could put the images there, delete them from your gallery. Great, they're gone. Don't use a hidden folder. Hidden folders on your iPhone are not password protected, and you can bet any kind of tech looking for things is going to go the looking. That's the first place there. they go. Yeah. Wow. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Um, if you have an Android phone, something really handy there called guest mode, which is nice. All you have to do is swipe down from the top on your Android screen. There's a little profile icon of you. You can click it and you can change to guest, which is pretty great. That way, nobody can see your contacts, your photos, any other personal stuff. I, I always wish that, you know, Apple would have that because it seems like that's a natural thing. You Absolutely. should be able to to give a maintenance account or a guest account for when you do need to have some work done on your device. I agree. And every time there's an iPhone update or, you know, iOS 15, they just release all the details. Every time there's a new one, I'm a little surprised there's not more of that stuff. And, you know, it. I have to imagine it's coming down the road. Do you know, a, a naked man, I don't know if you saw the story, a naked man actually broke into a church. You hear about that? <laughs> oh, no. Here's another one. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> How do you know? Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. The police chased him around, and they finally caught him by his organ. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, with that, hey, we've got uh, uh, uh No, we're not no, going. Uh, no? Uh, when I walked into the studio today, I heard something that I heard a couple of phrases. It was, my first job roller skating uh, DJ. Right. What was that, Mike? We were talking about sports, and Allie and Ben were talking about hockey and uh, how it's so fast and that they're all on skates and they're amazing at what they can do. And that took me all the way around to my one of my first jobs was a DJ. Before I was in radio, I was a DJ at a roller skating rink. So don't challenge me to a roller skating contest. <laughs> could you skate backwards? I could skate backwards, <gasps> oh, and forwards, wow. really? and twirls. And hey, I spent You're a lot kidding. of time there. Oh, man. I didn't know about this hidden talent. <laughs> we need to get Mike over to the great skate. We, we got to have on our next outing, we'll have to go to a roller. Do they still have yes, roller they do. skating? Oh, okay. Yeah, they do. Okay, okay. okay so now. Can you remember, like, what was the big song? Oh. What, was the, what was the big hit that people wanted, like, time and time again? Well, I'll, I don't know if it was the big song of the of the day, but uh, the the one there was one guy that would just request the same song over and over again, <laughs> and course. he was a country fan, and it was the Ozark. Was it the uh, was it maybe it was Alabama? I gotta, I gotta figure out the song. I, I don't know. I thought it was gonna be like, remember that song? I got a brand new pair of roses. <laughs> no, that was, <laughs> you got a surprisingly, no, we didn't get too oh, many requests no. for that song. <laughs> remember that song that goes, uh, oh boy, now I gotta sing. You guys are making me do crazy <laughs> things. Um bop, um bop, um bop, now now, um bop, um bop. That's okay. the song that he just he he kept on. I don't remember the I name of it. I could see skating along to that. But I, I do so. <clears throat> I do have nightmares about it every occasionally. <laughs> just around the corner, our quick tip uh, is uh, about streaming music, a uh, streaming music service, and also our favorite tech productivity hacks. So keyboard shortcuts, 
Google shortcuts, uh, do not disturb shortcuts. We'll talk about that. Kim's going to be back for Ben's product review. And brand new or not true is just ahead. It's Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. And brand new or not true is just around the corner right now. There's a tip for a streaming music service. Okay, pop quiz, guys. What is the most popular music streaming service? Oh, it's got to be... Say Spotify. Okay. Mike. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll go with Spotify. Yeah, it's Spotify. The last big survey was back in 2019, but Spotify is at about 35% of the market share. Apple Music is next. That's at 19. Amazon, 15. What do you two use? Amazon. Used to have Spotify. Now I've got Apple Music as part of those bundles. All right. And I am a Spotify gal. I like it because it's really easy to collaborate. I'm going to share one of my very favorite things to do. You can make a playlist with someone and you can both add things to it. This is really fun. Maybe you're going to go on a road trip, have a party. Um, Maybe you just want to make a a playlist with a friend who lives far away. You have to do this on the desktop app. So you open it up, click on any playlist, and then there's a button that says collaborative playlist. You actually can do this in the mobile app too. Um, You tap the little three dots on a playlist and you can click make collaborative and then you can share it with someone and you can all add songs to your heart's content. Well, it's good to know that now. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe if you ever go back to Spotify. It's time now for America's newest national game show sensation where you can play and guess, is it brand new or not true? Every week, literally thousands of new product sites, apps, and services are announced in the technology world. Some are destined for greatness, others not so much, and oftentimes products sound so crazy and outlandish. You sit back and think, what were they thinking? And then you've created, somebody's created a new tech millionaire. When playing Brand New or Not True, we'll present you, the home listener, with three product sites or ideas. And it's up to you to decide which two of the three are fake and which one of the three is real. Now, no cheating. You can't go to Google and put in a name because we do give you the names. We trust you. I probably shouldn't, but we do. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, don't cheat. And Ben's got the products. Ben is on a long-standing winning streak. I think it's about five weeks now. We so got to do something yeah, about this. Yeah, we got to break this. Oof. Well, you probably just jinxed it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no, this week is all about two and one. Okay, Ooh. two and one. Okay. So newer cars, you know, they're all about infotainment systems, right? Long gone are the days of cassette players, and you know, built-in CD players aren't far behind. Well, here's your Father's Day idea for dads not ready to say goodbye to the past. The Memory Lane Retro Music System. It packs a front-facing CD slot and a top-loading cassette player while staying (laughs) relatively small at 9 inches square and only 3.5 inches tall. So you power the Memory Lane through the DC port and connect it via auxiliary cable or Bluetooth, and then you can jam to your old CD or cassette collection in no time. Now it's made to rest on a flat portion of your dash, and stays in place thanks to a non-slip pad that's included. Now, nostalgia isn't always cheap, and the Memory Lane retails for $119, although it's on sale through the remainder of June, you know, Father's Day, for $89. Now, if you pay $99, you get a combo CD cassette storage case that attaches to the back of the car seat headrest. (laughs) So it's a cassette player and what else? And a CD player. Uh, CD player, cassette player. Go ahead, product number two. Okay, so think about the popularity of ultraviolet disinfection, particularly over the past year. Now it's in everything from stores where you shop to little boxes you put your phone and keys in. Now it's coming to the laundry room in the Samsung Smart Electric Dryer with steam sanitize and UV sterilization. The 7.5 cubic foot dryer is a front loader in black stainless steel with Wi-Fi connectivity and the added bonus of UV LED panels built into the inside of the door. So when there's five minutes left on any given drying cycle, if enabled, the system activates the ultraviolet system and then turns off when the dryer is complete. This dryer retails for $12.99. Okay. Pretty expensive. Go ahead. Okay. Other umbrellas may come and go, but the rain torch is here to stay. (laughs) Sure, it's waterproof, but it also packs a fiber cage framing system made up of fiberglass and metal to withstand high winds. Not just that, it's called the Rain Torch because it also has a pivoting flashlight built into the handle that can shine a beam more than 300 feet away and last nearly 200 hours. 
That means better visibility for you and for drivers who might not otherwise see you. Now, you might think a well-built umbrella with a sweet, pivoting flashlight would be heavy, but it actually weighs less than a pound. (laughs) Now, while its usual retail price is in the $70 range, it's been known to go on sale for about $50. Wow. As always, fantastic products. The Rain Torch Umbrella for $50. Great idea, Samsung Smart Electric Dryer for $12.99 with LED panels inside that disinfect the clothes. And then the Memory Lane Retro CD system (laughs) to place cassettes and CDs. Awesome, awesome products every time. This is hard. Uh, Okay, so how do we start eliminating these? Samsung Smart Electric Dryer for $12.99. You know what? My initial my initial thought when he was talking about this product was, well, that could be real. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at it now, and it doesn't make too much sense, so I'm going to go with that one. The one that I usually eliminate first <laughs> is the one that's usually real. So I'm going to say the smart electric dryer is real, the rain torch umbrella is fake, and the memory lane retro CD system for dad with his cassettes is fake. Oh, boy. All right. I can't pick the same one as you because I need one of us right. to be right. Better chance Maybe, of winning. Hopefully. Okay. I do think the Samsung dryer, I know they have UV stuff. They have disinfecting little closets. I'm going to say the dryer, they don't need it. Mm-hmm. You get your disinfection through hot water in the washing machine. Oh, I want that rain torch. That sounds awesome. It also maybe kind of sounds like a Ben invention. Uh, a Benvention, if a you will. A Benvention. <laughs> but I could also see you thinking, how can I listen to all these old CDs in the car? Let me invent the memory lane. I'm going to say the Rain Torch combination, flashlight and umbrella is the real product. Okay. Good for uh, Portland, Seattle folks. There you go. All right. Ben. Okay. Did one of us win? Just tell us if one of us won. Well, that would kind of ruin the oh, surprise. That ruins would the it? surprise. So, okay. Tell me go. what's wrong. All right, so the uh, the smart electric dryer by Samsung. Oh, dang it! I made that up. Yeah, yeah, I made that up. Oh, and then you've got what Ali selected: the rain torch, which I'm sorry to say <laughs> is real. Oh, yes, there you go. Oh, finally, great so, yeah, job, I did make Allie. Up the memory lane. Phew. The memory lane that? and the smart mm-hmm. electric dryer. Yeah, so the rain torch, and it just came out a few days ago. It's made by KeySmart. They make the like those key organizers and everything that are, huh. but they make all this other stuff too. And I saw, I got the email about that, and it's like that's sweet. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds pretty cool. Do you guys still have tapes around? No, somewhere in a box, maybe. Yeah, I still got, I still have some CDs, but man, <laughs> cassette tapes like all those maxi singles and all that stuff, long gone. Yeah, yeah me, me too. Neither. CDs, a few CDs. Uh, no, no tapes. No <laughs> tape. My parents, I think, threw away all their tapes. All right. So that's it for this week's edition of Brand New or Not True. Thank you, Ben and Allie. And up next, we're going to take a look at uh, our favorite productivity hacks, like, I don't know, keyboard shortcuts, multiple monitors. Also, the Do Not Disturb tasks in Google Calendar. We'll have to think about that a little bit. Also, our scam of the week. Uh, what you need to know about a new phishing campaign involving X-rated emails. It's the Tech Refresh Podcast with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. Every week we give you the inside scoop on what's going on in tech, so You're the source of tech information for your friends and family. This week, we're going to take a look at uh, productivity hacks across the board. Go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking about how much time tech saves us. And if you know the right shortcuts, the right tools, find things that work for you, it can really boost your productivity. Uh, Tech can also kind of tank your productivity. I thought this was so funny. There was a study by a company called Robert Half Technology And they found that the average worker spends about 22 minutes every day dealing with some kind of IT issue. Think about how much time Hmm. that is. Over the course of a year, that's 91 hours, which is like two weeks. A waste of time. So number one, even if we're talking about your devices at home, make sure your stuff is updated. If you keep your tech updated regularly, that'll wipe out at least some of these problems that waste your time. 
you know, if your system is, if you're not running the, the latest version of fill in the blank, yeah, you're going to run into issues. So let's get into some of the specific things we do um, to kind of boost our productivity. I'll start. I'm a big keyboard shortcut kind of person. Um, when I pick up a new one that is handy, I add it to my repertoire and I have a lot of things that I use time after time and little things, right? Like there's one that Ben taught me that I love, um, copy and paste, we all know. But if you are taking something from a different source and you want to paste it into a document, well, if you hold down the shift key, so control V and shift, you don't get any of the formatting with it. That's a super easy one that keeps you from having to clear out formatting. Um, I actually have a gaming keyboard at my home office setup. Ben, I know you do too. And I program some of the keys to do the things I want. So um, there's a dash that we use in writing, right? An M dash. It's not on the keyboard. Normally, you would have to copy and paste it from somewhere or do a pretty complex keyboard shortcut that's like five different keys. Well, I can just hit G5 or whatever it is on my keyboard, and I get the dash. I got the same button programmed in mind. So. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So if, if you've never tried one of those pretty fancy keyboards, you know, you might think like, well, I don't need that. That's for gamers. They have some really awesome stuff that you can program in. Same with like your mouse. You can program the buttons on your mouse to do different things. I've got one that closes windows, um, which is pretty darn cool. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good point as far as like if you use special software, all that software now is programmable. So if you do something all the time, I'm thinking we use Adobe Audition for editing audio and I have a shortcut button for insert silence. So if we're, you know, taking out breaths or whatever it is, it's just right there, boom, boom. And uh, so that's what I use. Also, we were talking about Google calendars. I block off stuff on my calendar so people are not trying to um, to get appointments or whatever at certain times. They do it anyway, or at least <laughs> they go, hey, can you do this later? And I always, you know, yes. But blocking off times in my calendar is a big one. And Google Calendar, as I mentioned, it, it's, it's, it's a huge productivity tool. If you use it, like we have reminders, like, for example, we want to send everybody a copyright reminder every year, once a year, in November, so they change their copyrights on any copy or any things that they're, they're using, all of the website stuff, everything. So that's in the Google Calendar or, you know, once a quarter. Hey, don't forget, you know, we need new promos and demos and everything else. So that's how uh, that's one of my kind of Google Calendar. Hacks. Yeah, that's such a good point, too, because. There's so much going on, whether it's work or home. There's just so much to remember in life, right? So why try to remember and then inevitably forget things when you right. can just set up these reminders that do it for you? It's it's, it's so helpful. handy. Yeah. yeah. And go back to your keyboard thing. Yeah, I'll use the program buttons. Uh, another good one is the control alt delete. You know, mm -hmm. Task manager. Just have a button program for that. Oh, that's something's cool. going to lock up. You just <laughs> mash that button down on the keyboard. <laughs> you so. don't have to mash yeah. three at a time. Yeah, exactly. Just like mm, angry push, but. It's that, and again, the gaming keyboards, I love them not just for the programmable buttons, but just the mechanical clicky. That's yeah. not a productivity thing. That's just a, but the hardware stuff, productivity, lots of monitors. Like here at the office, I have at my desk three monitors, which went, wow, that's a lot. Well, at home, <laughs> about five monitors, <laughs> just dedicated to all kinds of, there's like different browsers. So I've got, you know, one dedicated to our content calendar and one for like our show rundown and for our chat, you know, things like that, just all kinds. And TweetDeck, which is is a uh, site, a product owned by Twitter, that basically you can categorize all the Twitter accounts you follow into different columns, like whether it's like local news or tech news or weather. Well, and I think we should tell everyone that you have worked in news for a very, very long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is staying really on top of, OK, what's going on? And a lot of that happens on Twitter and you find out. You know, oh. things on Twitter before anywhere else. It just updates in real time. Yeah, I've been using that for about a decade. Still do. So. Yeah, and I think the the monitor thing and, you know, we use a lot of different spreadsheets here to track all kinds of stuff. And so I think that's a really good point. If you just have a monitor where, great, these three spreadsheets I need all the time are just going to be up so you don't have to constantly be opening and closing. And yeah, I think that's a good point, too. Uh, you can also set up your browser to automatically open certain pages. So if you access the same things all the time, great. On startup, you can get those to open. Ooh, that's a great idea. Yeah. I think I've done that before, and then I kind of forgot about it. But, uh, <laughs> I'll try that your, again. On your to-do list. Yeah. 
It's the Tech Refresh Podcast with Kim Commando and friends. One of the things we promise every week is to keep you from getting scammed. So we talk about a new scam that you need to watch out for. This week, what you need to know about a new phishing scam that involves, oh, oh, X-rated emails. There you go. Earlier this month, a security firm called Greathorn published a warning about a new phishing email campaign that goes from X-rated to blackmail. So you have these typical phishing emails that try to trick you into believing they're a person or they're a company you trust like Netflix. You know, renew your subscription before it's canceled or order these gift cards for your boss, things like that. Well, these emails take it further and researchers have seen these X-rated phishing attempts go up nearly a thousand percent in a year. Wow. Yeah. So you'll get an email. It directs you to click on a link. That'll take you to one of two types of sites, the one that looks like a sketchy dating site, or at least one that's sketchier than usual, and it goes well beyond the usual headshots, and they want you to pay to join. You're just turning over your information in your banking account at that point. The other is a site with X-rated photos, and it wants you to confirm your zip code to find local people to meet up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once, like, once again, you turn over any personally identifiable information, whether it's payment or personal. And then you get another email. This one threatens you with blackmail unless you pay more or turn over additional info. And, you know, it's bad. So we have all the details on these phishing emails at commando.com with tips to avoid being taken. But just remember, real people don't email naked photos of themselves to randos. Fall for it, and you're just (laughs) going to be the one who is indecently exposed. Yes. (laughs) All right. Speaking of productivity, (laughs) here's a 12-year-old boy we're going to tell you about who, well, he was extra productive during this pandemic. He's going to put us all to shame. Also, Ben, you've got a product review, one of the things we look forward to every week. Just give us a little hint. What's it going to be? Well, it's about wearables, but not not the kind you wear on your wrist like a smartwatch. I'm talking about a smart ring. Okay. A smart ring that not only just tracks how much you sleep, but really digs in to the quality of your sleep and overall health. It's a health. Yeah, it's a health tracker. All right. We'll look forward to that. And Kim will be back for that as well. It's the Tech Refresh podcast from Kim Commando and Friends and Commando.com. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tech Refresh podcast heard exclusively on the Kim Commando Explains podcast from Commander.com. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get this podcast delivered automatically every Friday with the Kim Commando Explains podcast. And also gets you the special feature podcast. Well, this week, if you have products at home, you know, we talk about it all the time, the Internet of Things, and they can get hacked. So we uh, called in an expert. Kim talks to him about Uh, the Internet of Things and how they do get into this stuff. It's called APIs and all about APIs on that Kim Commando Explains podcast. All right. One of the things that we look forward to every week is Ben's product review. And this week we got a ring. An actual ring. So when you think about wearables, what is it? You think watches, right? Maybe glasses. Okay. But you don't think much about the ones that actually go around your finger, but they exist. And you may not have heard the name Aura before. It's O-U-R-A, but they really made kind of a name for themselves in the past year because they had a knack for picking up the subtle signs of illness in people who were later diagnosed with the flu and COVID. So that's kind of what put them on the radar. But they have this element to them, and this is the reason I wear one in addition to an Apple Watch, because the ring is really about your sleep. I don't just mean basic sleep tracking. Okay, but if it's sleep tracking, then why do you have it on now? I mean, you're at work. Well, well because it does. Is that something you don't want me to know? <laughs> yeah. His nap is off, actually after this. Yeah, if the lights are off in the office, I'm just working real hard. That's all that means. So. No, it's basically, you know, it'll track, and it, it actually ties in with your Apple health kit and things like that. But whereas your Apple Watch or a Fitbit, whatever you wear, it'll track how long you sleep. You know, it'll say how long you were asleep, maybe a few other metrics, but this one really digs into it. So you get up and you open the app after you wake up and you check your readiness score. And that takes into account your sleep, your resting heart rate, variability, things like that. And it compares that night's data to like the days and weeks before to kind of give you an overall sense of where you are. And, you know, I've been wearing this thing for four months. And it's really given me this kind of eye-opening and not such a good thing about how I sleep. Like a couple of days ago, 
I looked at it and I got about seven hours of sleep, which is pretty average. But of that, it says I only got two and a half hours of REM sleep. And as far as deep sleep goes, 16 minutes. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. What's a good amount? More than more than that. <laughs> <laughs> a few hours, I would think. But, I mean, it just goes to show. Now, what, now let me ask you a question. Before yeah, you move sure. on. Now, when you look at that and, and it says that you are not ready for the day because you didn't get all that deep sleep, do you feel yourself like in the middle of the day going, yeah, I'm a little tired because I didn't get the deep sleep. I mean, whereas like six months ago, you'd be like, I'm just a little tired because maybe I need a better lunch. So you're saying like ignorance is bliss. Exactly. Like if you didn't know, maybe, you know, there are some days if I know I woke up tired, I probably didn't sleep well. I don't look at the app. I don't want to know. I'll <laughs> tell you, you do look like a geek though. I mean, if I just were to see you on the street. And <laughs> a cool is that, geek? Yeah. I mean, look, look at him. I mean, he's got the watch. You know, going on his left hand, the ring on the right hand. And I mean, if you had a pocket there, I swear there should be a pocket protector. I mean, there should be something else there. <laughs> I rocked the phone holster far longer than oh, was, uh, yeah. you know, socially allowed. <laughs> and you got married with that phone holster, I too. Did, I did. I think it was actually on <laughs> under my tux And then she threw coat. it away. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, but it was right next to the pager, so it didn't matter. I'm sorry. We digress. I'm sorry, Ben. We just totally take over <laughs> your product right, reviews all the time. <laughs> I won't say it's like changed my life, but it's it's actually made positive steps to like I'm more conscious about because it'll give you reminders. You know, you probably shouldn't eat a heavy meal before bed or you really had a your, your heart rate was elevated last night. You probably shouldn't work out too hard today kind of thing. Rest today. Oh, thanks, ring. You know, stuff like that. But, <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So you have the watch and the ring. Mm -hmm. Could you just get rid of the watch? No. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Sorry. God, I got such a dirty look there. <laughs> Dang. No, the watch I use, like, you know, it's an Apple watch, so you want to close the rings. I'll use it, obviously, for my notifications throughout the day, email, text, whatever. But that's what I use mainly to track workouts and stuff, like on my little QB elliptical or just general workouts. That's what logs this. The QB elliptical. Okay, that's another gadget for another time. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. I still use it every day. Do you? Uh, wow. Yeah. So, but this I mainly use for sleep, but it ties in. So it'll also mix the data and record it together into the, you know, respective apps. So, and how much is it? Uh, this ring, they start at 300, but it's like Ooh. scratch proof Ooh. titanium. It lasts a week on a charge and the app is free. So it is, it is more expensive than some watches, not an Apple watch, but some watches, but it actually, especially if you don't sleep all that well, it's, it can be a benefit. And this, it does look nice. It doesn't look like you're wearing some weird yeah, it thing. Doesn't, yeah. It just you, looks you like a ring. You can choose from a few different colors. And I just chose one. Well, it kind of goes with the, the theme I already have. <laughs> or, you know, you could call it like your secret decoder ring. Secret Ooh, decoder ring. To decode yeah. how badly you slept. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Does it have a charging port? Is that how you charge no, it? No, it comes with its own little proprietary base. It's a little elevated circle that just Okay, so it's a magnet. Over. Okay. It just sits on top. Wow. Awesome. All right, so you think you got a lot done during this last pandemic, the last 14 months or whatever it is. You've been sitting about home. I don't know. Maybe you just real proud of yourself. You built some furniture or whatever. Well, we've got a kid that's going to put us all to shame. Mike Wimmer, he's a 12-year-old kid from North Carolina. He's got a pretty big accomplishment under his belt now. He just graduated as high school valedictorian. Uh, also, he Wait a minute. He's 12. He's 12. But that's wow. not even it. Okay. He also graduated from college the wow. same week. During the pandemic, like all of us, Mike had a lot of extra time on his hands. He said, why would I just sit around doing nothing? I could take a few extra classes. Well, he finished up his high school requirements in December, and then he focused on community college work. He did two years of high school and a two-year associate's degree just in one year. And now he's been accepted as an aerospace engineering major <laughs> at Georgia Tech. Again, this kid is 12, okay? It's amazing. Surprise, that is not all. Mike has also started two technology companies. He started the first. <laughs> it's called Next Era Innovations when he was seven. He knows about a dozen computer languages. I love this. There's a lot of pushback he gets that, man, you must not have a very fun life. You're not a kid anymore. He told this to the Today Show. You know, if you look around my room, there's Hot Wheel cars along the walls, tracks on the floor. There are Legos all over the place. I'm having the time of my life doing everything, whether that's at school or my businesses and still being a kid. I love this kid. Uh, Mike also graduated from high school with a 5.54 GPA. He's a valedictorian and from community college with a 4.0. Wow. I didn't know it went 
<laughs> above five like that. I did not either. Wow. Well yeah. done, Mike. What did we get done uh, during the pandemic? Anybody? Any projects? I watched a lot of Netflix. <laughs> we no, do. we we did a lot around the house, but man, nothing bought like. Bought an that. air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And you bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> Uh, if you'd like to comment about the podcast, good or bad, mostly good, send us an email to podcast at commander.com. Again, that's podcast at commander.com. On behalf of Kim, Ben, Ali, I'm Mike. We'll see you next time. And for the latest digital news and articles anytime, go to commander.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O.